As part of a program to promote ACP Fish 2 activities in the Pacific region, a network meeting was held on January 24, 2012 in Suva, Fiji at the Novotel Hotel in Lamy. The meeting offered participants the opportunity not only to learn more about how the ACP Fish 2 EC funded program is contributing to improving fisheries management and benefiting the fishing industry as a whole, but also to share experiences with key stakeholders from other countries within the region. The theme of the event was, how do legal and policy frameworks contribute to fisheries resources sustainability? In P2, we have about 20 projects, and they are supposed to be implemented up to uh, November 2012. Unfortunately, as you can see, 2012 is just a short, November 2012 is just a short distance away. We have asked for an extension. I think the Pacific is among about 500 regions that we actually asked for extension on this uh, implementation timeline. With the projects, there's five components. We have a component on improving fisheries policies. We have a component on MCS, improving MCS capabilities, uh, enhancing national and regional strategies, the research strategies, improving business and private sector investment, and also information, uh, increasing information knowledge sharing. That's component five, and the component is given to SPC to implement. There's two projects in that, uh, in that part. The grid strategy must be included in policies and legal frameworks to ensure a few things. One is transparency, two, accountability, and three, very importantly, is to constrain decision makers. If our legislations and policy frameworks are too loose, um, it is ineffective because it opens up um, too much to decision makers. And then whatever strategy that is put in place must be monitored and revised as necessary. Managing fisheries is about managing people and businesses, not about managing fish. Fish populations are managed by regulating the actions of people. If fisheries management is to be successful, then associated human factors, such as the reactions of fishermen, fishing right owners in the case of Fiji, and end users of fisheries product are of key importance and need to be understood. Our Pacific Island neighbors have all modernized their fisheries laws, and uh, probably Fiji is the only one holding onto the fisheries law oldest fisheries law in the Pacific. The above scenario is in no way depicts that the department did not make any attempts to modernize our fisheries law because within a span of 10 years, from 1996 to 2006, we have had four separate consultations from four teams of consultants. Unfortunately, none of them finished products that derived from the four consultations was ever enacted. Law in the Marshall Islands. Um, and already just a good indication of the effectiveness of these changes is that there have already been two uh, violators who have been prosecuted and fined under the act. One was for possession of shark products, which resulted in a fine of $125,000 and one was for failure to use a mobile transceiver device within the fishery waters, which resulted in a fine of $50,000. So now that all of these laws are passed and have gone into effect, there are still some further needs for the Marshall Islands in order to uh, move forward and, and fill in some of the remaining gaps. One of the main things is that the regulations that go along with this act uh, for processing and export of, uh, of marine products for the sea cucumber fishery and for the marine aquarium trade. All of those regulations have been drafted in their initial form and approved in their draft form by the Board of Directors of MIMRA. What is a co? Basically, it's a voluntary global instrument. Uh, but several of its principles are based in international law and, uh, and some uh, treaties 
I, I put the picture of some of them on, on the right there. Of course, the United Nations Convention of the Sea, the uh, Peace Talks Agreement, uh, the Compliance Agreement, and more recently, and I can put it up there, the uh, Agreement on Port State Measures to Prevent, Deter, and uh, 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 what is the game? Uh, illegal fishing. Prevent, deter, and got it. Okay, so eliminate illegal fishing. So uh, the, some of these principles are based on this instrument. So in as far as they reflect international law, and in as far as they reflect the instruments, which if your country is a party to, then you must ensure that implementation is done. And what, what happens uh, in terms of implementation it is basically through policy and legal frameworks. Um, basically, it provides uh, guide, guidelines for responsible fisheries, including aquaculture, and of course, aquaculture is not talked about uh, so much in the region. Hopefully, through ACP Fish 2, uh, the, the, um, uh, the issue of aquaculture will, will, will gain prominence. I'd like to take this opportunity again to thank the three speakers, and I'll take the Permanent Secretary and uh, Lady, everyone else, to a distinguished guest coming across the list. Uh, we are event and thank you very much. also hosted the third program monitoring and training workshop for the Pacific region. During this four-day workshop, participants from ACP countries reviewed project implementation and participated in a training session in the preparation of terms of reference within the European Development Fund project cycle. The workshop involved representatives from fisheries administrations from 14 countries of the region and from the most important regional fisheries bodies and regional economic communities, namely the Forum Fisheries Agency, the Secretariat of the Pacific Community and the Western Central Pacific Fisheries Commission. The ACP Fish 2 program is implemented with a view to help the states manage their resources better so that fisheries can continue to play important roles in an international context marked by a mobilization to fight against poverty and improve food security. <laughs>